leaning on ChatGPT and my own AI models, I've managed to develop a software that is capable of watching professional Overwatch matches while recording player statistics and performance. I did all of this not as an experienced software developer with years of experience on my resume. In fact, I am a relative beginner and I had practically no Python experience when I started. Using ChatGPT, I was able to take on a project that, uh, quite frankly, would have been over my head otherwise. It took five long weeks of blood, sweat, and Python, but at the end of it, I managed to reach some pretty substantial milestones. I created a tiny front end to automate a lot of the tedious tasks of manual data input. For the software to work as intended, it needs to know the player names, team names, and timestamps for where the match starts and ends. As you can see, finding the timestamps for a match is very easy on YouTube. You just copy the link, and once you press get names, a little backend script will fill in the fields. Since it's translating images to text, there are some errors here and there, such as a dot or a wrong letter, but fixing it is not that tedious. It's like a game of spot the typo and who doesn't love a good puzzle. It wouldn't be too hard to make it 100% accurate with some string matching logic, but it's just something I didn't quite bother getting to. I then simply press submit, which repackages the information into a JSON file and downloads it. This is a file that the Overwatch scanner knows how to process, and it automatically downloads the video, jumps to the timestamps, scans through it, and ultimately outputs several logs. A key CSV file holds all the relevant statistics for the match in an organized format, while the other logs mostly help with debugging and accuracy checks. After that, a script automatically uploads all the stats to a Google Sheet where the data is repackaged, recalculated, and presented neatly. For the purpose of this video, I simply scanned some recent playoff matches and added a little filtering option. Naturally, the sheet could get much prettier and needs more data to be useful in a professional setting. Still, all the tools are now here to build a large database for both professional matches and individual team practices. Before we touch on how I made this project, let's quickly cover the why. As some of my old school subscribers might know, I spent seven years working in the professional Overwatch scene. I started as a professional player before moving on to head coaching and upper management roles. Last year, I decided to move into the software development space after enjoying the CS50 Python course. So I signed up and got into an intensive three-month Java bootcamp in my home country of Sweden. Since graduating, I've worked on several different projects to expand my portfolio before ultimately deciding to work on this particular project. Working on a project that relates so closely to something that I am so familiar with yet has a lot of layers of complexity to it is something that felt like a worthwhile use of my time. Because you can change Heroes and Overwatch on a whim, I knew that as a baseline I needed to be able to record how long each player played each hero, when they made a swap to a different hero, and then record how many eliminations, assists, and deaths they had on each hero. I knew that for a project of this magnitude I really had to take it one step at a time and break it down into smaller problems that I could knock off one at a time. During an Overwatch match, you can see what hero each player is playing in the top hero bar. Once a player changes their hero, the icon also changes. This is where I decided to start. First, I needed to learn how to train machine learning models to classify Overwatch icons. After some research, I realized that Python seemed like the best bet for something like this due to its excellent machine learning libraries. So I left my trusted Java behind and submerged myself in hours of tutorials. I knew nothing of machine learning prior to this, so I spent a lot of time trying to understand the theory and the terminology. Naturally, machine learning is not something you learn overnight, and a lot of the concepts were too tough for me to grasp quickly, but I understood enough on a surface level to get started. This is also where ChatGPT helped out a lot. While I was able to create some training scripts with tutorials, I also didn't grasp all the concepts fully, and that's where I relied on ChatGPT to explain things to me that maybe I didn't quite get, or maybe things that I'd forgotten, such as what each hyperparameter does. As I was tinkering with different levers, it was important for me to continue to learn and understand what is going on, and it was great to have those explanations at my fingertips as I was developing this. I learned that image classification models need a lot of training data to be accurate, and this is where ChatGPT helped a lot as well. While I did have to do a lot of manual cropping, ChatGPT was very helpful in writing simple scripts that could modify the images in order to diversify my dataset, making the model more accurate. 
this was an iterative process that I had to go back and forth with a lot until the results were satisfactory. In the end, I was able to step through a video, scan all the images, and determine when each player made a hero swap and how long they played each hero. It's important to note that a lot of the prompts that I was feeding into ChatGPT at this point were a thousand words or even longer because the complexity of the project uh, grew so big and it was just impossible for ChatGPT to keep up with the context. So I really had to solve a lot of the issues myself and pseudocode with sound logic and then feed that into ChatGPT and that was the only way it was able to provide me with accurate code snippets. Throughout this process, I also made sure to read through every single line of code and ask ChatGPT to explain syntax that I didn't understand so that I could debug the code myself later. As a result of this, my comfort level with Python grew tremendously over time. So at this point, I had an image classification model that was tailored to my project. Naturally, I was ecstatic, thinking I was going to breeze to the finish line until I was hit by a truck roughly the size of a Overwatch kill feed. Unlike the hero bars, the kill feed entries are dynamic in size due to player names as well as assist counts for each entry. After spending way too many hours trying to solve this problem, I wondered whether training an object detection model could help simplify the task. After struggling to get things to work with TensorFlow on this front, constantly battling dependency issues, I had to change course. I started experimenting with the PyTorch library and it seemed like it was infinitely easier to set up and get going. I learned the required steps in training an object detection model mostly through tutorials and finally got it to work. I could handle a lot of the steps on my own at this point, such as labeling kill entries, but could still rely on ChatGPT to make simple format conversion scripts and prepare the data for training. I made sure to leave myself good notes of the whole process, which really came in handy when I needed to retrain my model several times in the future. At this point, I decided to refactor all of my code because it had become too messy. I had several thousand lines of code and it was just too hard to continue developing without some proper structure. I separated everything into classes, different files, and made a config where I could easily modify global variables without hard coding values. Having an object detector for kill entries helped a ton. Of course, I still had to come up with logic to pair kill entries to determine colors of the entries and train a new image classifier model to accurately detect kill feed icons. I also had to put in plenty of contingencies into the program in order to filter out scenarios where my models weren't confident in their predictions, or if they were making predictions that were impossible based on the game logic, such as a teammate eliminating a teammate. After all, the broadcast video isn't always perfect, and if my scanner happens to scan a frame that is distorted, it can be impossible to accurately predict a kill for that particular frame. Still, with all of those contingencies in place and a lot of fine-tuning, it has gotten to the point where it's mostly accurate. Kind of like my aim in Overwatch on a good day. Bazinga. There were also some additional challenges I had to tackle beyond just the regular game logic. For example, I had to ensure that the scanner could accurately recognize when a game was in a paused state in order to calculate the time played correctly. I also had to ensure that it was able to recognize when a replay was taking place in order not to record the kills being replayed twice. These were some tedious tasks, but I was ultimately able to solve it mostly with template matching. I then decided to add logic so that the program could recognize when a team fight starts and ends, which helped me track the ever important first kills and first deaths. And that is ultimately the breakdown of the project. Five weeks ago when I started this project, I never thought I could take it as far as I did. Of course, there's plenty of room to improve it and to add new features, but the tool is at a point where it's actually useful in a practical environment, and that's very rewarding for someone who is very fresh in the space. I went from knowing basically no Python to it being the language I am most comfortable coding in. I learned a decent amount about machine learning. I also improved a lot at collaborating with ChatGPT and writing good prompts. I realized that as long as I can figure out the solution and communicate the logic clearly via text, ChatGPT can fill in a lot of the blanks. My project ended up being way too big for ChatGPT to remember it all in memory and understand all the context, so I had to break down the problems to a smaller one-dimensional level for it to be able to contribute. With that being said, learning how to use ChatGPT as a tool has been fantastic and it has given me a ton of confidence to tackle ambitious projects. I honestly think it's a game changer for people like myself who are very new in this space and I encourage all of you to be ambitious with your project, even if you, like myself, lack the experience.
As a final note, obviously this channel used to be focused on Overwatch educational content, but as I've stepped away from esports and stepped more into the tech space, the content on this channel is obviously going to change as well. So please like and subscribe and do let me know in the comments what kind of content you'd like to see on this channel. I'm obviously still interested in gaming and you might see some Overwatch stuff here, here and there, but uh, obviously I would like to diversify the type of content I make based on my new interests. So yeah, that's it. And thank you for watching.